I think this is my fourth DC apartment tour, so I'm gonna spare you guys my usual disclaimers and just jump into a few FAQs I know I'm going to get with posting. First being, where is the apartment? And I never say the actual complex for security reasons. Sometimes I don't even share the neighborhood, um, but by the time you guys are seeing this, I will have already moved out. So this apartment is in DC proper in the DuPont neighborhood. It's kind of in a gray area between two or three different neighborhoods. I feel like the architecture and the building is the most similar to other apartments I've seen in DuPont. So we're gonna go with that. Another question I know I'm gonna get asked is my rent. And I got super, super lucky. My base rent is 2,100 a month. And then with utilities, I usually land right around 2,200, sometimes a little bit more depending on how much energy I use. If you're familiar with DC and specifically this area of DC, this is a really incredible deal for the apartment. I think I just got really lucky in finding truly an ethical landlord. I, I feel like they just rent to me at their mortgage rate. I'd say the going rate for this neighborhood is probably between three and 500 more a month, um, depending on the utilities in the building. So this is a true one bedroom apartment. It's just under 600 square feet. If you wanna see a few models of junior one beds or a three bedroom apartment, I'll leave my previous apartment tours linked down below. I know I say this a few times throughout the video, but a lot of this stuff has been with me since I first moved to DC, so I'm gonna leave links to as much as I can find down below. Or if I see something similar, I will leave that linked down below as well. I'm also planning a video on my best tips and tricks for finding apartments in DC because like I said, I feel like I've had really good luck the past two or three times, not only finding the places, but beating the other applicants. So if you have any immediate questions for that or anything you want to know, I'd definitely leave that in the comments section. But I really have loved living here and I'm so excited to bring you guys around. Okay, so when you first walk in, we have the entryway over here and that leads to the kitchen and then into the living room. So turning back around this way, I have a utility closet, this same setup from my last couple of apartments and a coat closet over here. Again, very similar setup to my last couple of apartments. I have this over the door hook where I keep my most common bags, keys, stuff like that. And then I just have a few everyday jackets hanging up and my trash and recycling tucked away. There's actually a pretty good amount of storage tucked up there as well, but a lot of that stuff is the owners or previous tenants that were kind of passed down with the apartment. So definitely good storage in there. And then coming over this way, again, this is a setup that I'm sure a lot of you will recognize. I have this circle mirror from Walmart bowl from either home goods or target filled with chargers hand sanitizer chapstick kind of random stuff like that and then this clear console table desk from kohl's i want to say and then leo's water is under there because a lot of cats don't like to drink water near their food and then this painting from my last apartment a family painting is kind of between the kitchen, dining, living areas, but I just love it and it's a really cool piece to have. This is what it looks like coming from the other side. There is a small utility closet here and then everything else, like I said, which leads into the kitchen. So coming into the kitchen, this is definitely the most functional setup I've had since moving to DC. It's not my first choice in aesthetics, but I feel like I've done a good job at kind of making it my own and keeping everything tidy. Starting with the other side, actually, if you have seen any of my other apartment tours, you know that I really like keeping counter spaces clean. So this is definitely a little bit more cluttered than I'd like it to be, but I just have like my usual plates, bowls, everything like that in there. And I'm not gonna go through every cabinet just because I feel like I don't have anything too revolutionary, but I will say if you're living in a smaller space and need more storage, these little shelf racks are such a game changer and really good for just making smaller cabinet spaces more functional. And then coming down to the actual countertop, I have this little corner over here of essentially pending items. So some like sponsorship, brand deal stuff. I have some champagne because I just recently left my job. And then I have this knife block, which I always get a ton of questions on. It's from Amazon, it's a few years old. So they've updated the model a little bit since, but I'll leave the most recent version linked down below. 
And then this is a somewhat new purchase for me. I got this back in, I want to say January or February of this year. And I absolutely love it. I got it off of Facebook Marketplace. So I got a really good deal. It's definitely an investment. But if you're someone like me who one really enjoys drinking coffee but also enjoys making coffee i would definitely recommend but would also recommend checking facebook for one that's gently used i feel like this has been such a good investment for me so i just have all of the accessories and stuff like that for it some syrups and scales on the side pretty standard refrigerator and freezer combo i have some serving plates and boards up there and then coming to it the other side Again, a pretty standard setup. I don't think anything really of note here. This paper towel holder is from Amazon. Soap dispenser is from World Market. I've actually been plant sitting at this plant, so I'm not 100% sure like where this tray is from, but this seems like a relatively standard terracotta planter, and I believe it's a ZZ plant, but if I'm wrong, feel free to leave that in the comments. Um, drying rack is from Wayfair and then up here I just have some extra storage. I have this vase from H&M and then some leftover containers for Leo's food. One thing I really liked about this kitchen was this little cutout to the dining and living room space. I feel like it's really great when I have friends over and just lets in a little bit more light than would naturally come in. Coming over to the dining space, this might be my favorite corner in the apartment. I am so happy with the way that this turned out. A lot of this is recycled from my previous apartments, but I would say the most notable change is the table this is the first time i've had a space big enough to have a formal seating area i think i purchased this table from home depot it was a really good price for the size i want to say it was under 300 dollars, and it's relatively substantial it's definitely not the quality of something you would invest in but i wanted something that i could beat up that my friends could play games on and i wouldn't worry about it getting scratched so i feel like this was a really good solution actually and then i really liked the idea of having mismatched chairs so these are kind of from a variety of places this tiny one is from a thrift store in alexandria this white one back there is from miss pixies and then the two cloth ones are from target all of the decor on the table is from Target as well, actually. And then coming up here, I have the same acrylic shelves from Amazon that were in my last apartment and some plants there. I have my little trio of disco balls, this print from Society6 of DC, Society6 print of Big Sur with a frame from Pottery Barn, this floating frame with a photo of DC. I believe the frame is from TJ Maxx. This Urban Outfitters inspired Good Things Are Coming print, Society6 London print, and Urban Outfitters wood shelf. And then on this windowsill, I just have a few other plants and one more frame over here from TJ Maxx as well. And then lastly, I have Leo's litter box and his automatic feeder over here. In a bigger apartment, these would obviously be somewhere else, more tucked away, um, especially the litter box, but with a little under 600 square feet. This is just what made the most sense. And obviously they're still noticeable when you take a step back, but I feel like they're not overpowering. So for me, this was the best solution. But because this area is so busy, I did want to keep the living room a little bit more minimalist. And I know you guys can't really see because of the way that the windows are blown out with the exposure, but there's a lot of colorful row homes and trees out of these windows which i feel like somehow add a lot of color to the space because when you can't see that it is giving sad beige baby in here so i promise it is much more cozy and inviting in person but i agree on camera it looks so stark to be honest um but these chairs are from world market that little end table is from facebook marketplace these two bins are from h&m and home goods coffee table is from walmart it is truly hanging on for dear life i've had this for i think three or four years now this rug was purchased from etsy i was under the impression that it was handmade but i did see it on rugs usa so i'll just go ahead and leave that one linked down below because it was a lot cheaper than 
the Etsy one. Leo's feeder just went off, so apologies if you can hear him eating in the background. But the last thing in here that is new is this couch, which I found on Facebook Marketplace, but it's from West Elm. It's one of those couches I don't even feel bad having people spend the night on because it truly is that comfortable. And then I just have these two pillows from Target and everything else came with the couch. And then coming over this way, there's not a ton over here, but this fireplace is a really nice feature of the apartment. I haven't actually used it just because I am scared of burning the entire building down or Leo getting burned somehow. But I have a few plants up there, my TV, this little spray guy from Target, and then this fireplace cover from Facebook Marketplace as well. And then going down this hallway, I have my laundry in there and then the bathroom to the left and my bedroom to the right. So starting with the bathroom, the bathroom is where the aesthetic starts to slip in this apartment, I think. Starting with the shower curtain, I actually really love the shower curtain. I had it hanging in at my first apartment in DC, but as you can see, it's a little bit short. This is something I said I was gonna fix back in December and did not, but this bath mat is from Target. I have these really great windows in here, which is great for getting ready in the morning, but I usually keep at least these two shut because you can see directly into the buildings across the street. So just for privacy. And then over here, again, trying to keep things pretty clean as far as countertop space. While the bathroom is falling apart a little bit, it's not really showing on camera, but the mirror is pretty beat up. And then this front panel is like completely sliding off. Um, it does have a lot of great storage, so I have storage behind the mirror and storage under the sink. I have this makeup container from the container store, soap dispenser from TJ Maxx, bowls from Target, hand towels from Target, and then I hung up one of the extra acrylic shelves that I had for my everyday skincare and hair care products. But like I said, this bathroom doesn't really have any character to it, but I do think it's clean and organized and very functional. So coming into the bedroom, this is where we completely lose sight of the aesthetic in the apartment. Um, from this angle, it's not too bad, but as you can see, it's definitely a bit of a cave in here. This is pretty much as good as it gets for natural lighting in here. Occasionally in the afternoon, I'll get some actual beams of light in here. It just depends on the weather. This is another room I thought I'd put more time and effort into, but it just honestly didn't really make sense and I don't spend a lot of time in here anyway. This is just kind of where I sleep. So we'll do a quick tour, but this isn't the one that I want you guys to take inspo from. <laughs> Cat Scratcher over there is from Amazon. Nightstands are the same as my old apartment from TJ Maxx. Basically everything you're seeing is the exact same. Um, this print I found on Etsy and then the frame is from Pottery Barn. And all of the bedding you can see is from Target with the exception of the duvet cover, which is from Parachute. As you can see over here, Leo actually loves this little fire escape. Um, it's definitely not super aesthetically pleasing, especially through the camera. Um, but there's a little bird family that's made a nest right over there and he loves checking in on them. And coming over this way, I have my guitar, same mirror from my last apartment. This one is from Amazon. And then this corner is where things get really bad. Everything else was acceptable. This is tough. Everything over here is stuff that's either on my Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace account, stuff that I have wanted to sell since I moved in here, but either haven't listed or haven't sold. And then this cleaning cart is just Something that I thought I would make more of an effort to find a home for in the apartment and the days went by and sure enough, it's still here. So this is a permanent feature of my bedroom decor actually, but it's not something that I want for myself. And then coming over here, I have again, more stuff for Poshmark. That's a box of stuff from my desk at work that I just already have packed up for the move. And then the only redeeming thing I have in this room is this little cabinet sideboard from Goodwood here in DC. I originally thought this was gonna fit better in my living room or dining room and just didn't end up having enough space. So it's been kind of tucked away in here. It's incredible for storage and I love the look of it. Every time somebody comes over, they compliment it. It doesn't look nearly as cute on camera. I don't know how to explain like what 
is different. I think it's the sizing. It's just much more petite looking in person. Um, but this is actually probably my favorite piece of furniture that I own. So I'm really excited to give it a better life in the new place. It just did not live up to its fullest potential here, but definitely one of my best purchases. And then lastly, we have the closet, which is a massive improvement. If you had seen my last apartment tour, I have essentially quadruple the storage here compared to at my last place. Nothing too revolutionary here. I just have all of my clothes hanging up. I have my pants down here on smaller hangers, which I think I saw on TikTok and is a really great life hack. I feel like it looks so much cleaner to not have the full size hangers. You can see the difference here. I think it just really keeps the focus on the pants and looks a little bit cleaner. And then on this side, I decided not to do a dresser in this room because I knew I wasn't likely going to re-sign here and didn't know what furniture would fit best in my next place or really what I was looking for. So I ended up purchasing a few of these containers from the container store because I knew regardless I'd find a use for them. So that's what all of this is. And then I have some t-shirts and this shoe rack from Target. This little clothing hamper bin is from H&M Home. Here's a little bit better of a view of the entire bedroom. It's actually a really good size. So again, this is just a quick little run through of how everything pieces together. It's such a cozy and warm airy apartment. I am just obsessed with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, I'll leave all of my previous apartment tours and links to as much as I can find down below. Stay tuned because moving vlogs start next week. And again, I know a lot of you love the DC content. So I do have some videos that are pre-filmed that will be going up after the moving vlogs. So stick around for those as well. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.